Hey guys, so since Ubuntu 15.10 has been released, a lot of us have been looking to see what Ubuntu have in store for 16.4. So 16.4, the next release of Ubuntu, is going to be a long-term support release. So for those of you that don't know, uh, the long-term support versions of Ubuntu are released once every two years, and they're really designed more for server use or people that want desktop machines, um, but they don't really want to maintain them. They want a very low-maintenance machine. Uh, this comes possibly at the expense of uh, the latest and greatest software in the repositories, but... Um, again, you get the benefit of low maintenance and a degree of stability as well. If you come across an error and fix it, that's two years, uh, presuming you come across that error at the beginning of the installation process, that's two years before you even have to think about it again. And by you know that far down the line, it could very well have been patched or another solution could very well have been found. So yeah, it's, this is going to be a very widely deployed operating system. So it's always interesting to see what Ubuntu and Canonical have in store because it often lends a good roadmap uh, for, for, well, the shape of, of Ubuntu and also in many cases from many perspectives uh, wider Linux as well because Ubuntu of course is, is very much a very popular distribution right now and it's seen as the de facto uh, Linux distribution for, for desktop certainly in the case of a lot of retailers and um, whenever I see Linux in the wild it does tend to be the Ubuntu Unity desktop which well, I got to admit is, is, is far from my favorite desktop but I change desktops as often as I change socks and uh uh so so but but i've never managed to get get along with unity almost every other um uh, desktop environment i can i can i can really kind of get to grips with and, and get into a decent workflow with even uh, even the latest gnome desktops but uh but uh, but ubuntu's unity is just something i couldn't get past so anyway, there are a few interesting features. In fact, there are quite a lot of interesting features for this release of Ubuntu because usually the long-term support release, uh, they don't usually have any drastic design changes uh, often to... You know, they they off the this distribution is going to be uh, going to be used for quite you know for some time to come. So they often sort of play the safer choices, uh, but not this time. They're actually bringing in quite a few new features. They're removing what people call the spyware, um, which I guess is a legitimate just uh, a legitimate. Um, description of it. Um, it's basically uh, the online search in the menu, which is switched on by default uh, on current versions of the Ubuntu Unity desktop, only the Ubuntu Unity desktop, by the way. Um, and it uh, saves your search history uh, and uses it to um, send it off to the, the Amazon advertising people. So a lot of people uh, will um, be pleased that that is now, it's actually off by default. Um, but uh, but that is that is long overdue. A lot of people are very very happy about that, um, and a lot of people probably are likely now going to feel a lot more confident in recommending uh, Ubuntu to a lot of newcomers to Linux, um, as as you know, with privacy being that uh, that 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 sort of cornerstone that often attracts a lot of people, uh, especially whenever a new version of Windows, of course, comes around. We we often get a lot of people that sort of jump ship and come over to our side. So uh, what else is there? The ability to move the Unity launcher. So the Unity side dock is is has never been able to be moved without third-party extensions. And typically speaking, third-party extensions to manage your desktop is something that I personally advise against because whenever you um, they they break during upgrades a lot. Um, I have yet to see. Um, third-party plugins work consistently on any desktop from from gnome to 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 a lot of the smaller ones as well usually the best plugins are the first party ones made by the people that also make the um desktop environment or the people that communicate and are involved with the people that make the desktop environment so um so it's good that they're bringing this in um it's again it's about time too but um and also i think that would uh, in the cases of a lot of screen layouts as well especially people with multiple monitors that's a lot more of a preferable solution to have a um a, you know a top and bottom kind of layout rather than a left and right one um yeah that's brilliant i mean it's a very small thing and i'm probably never really going to seriously use the unity desktop but it's it's something that i did specifically feel uh, that was missing
Another one is that they're developing a new USB startup uh, creator. This is actually quite important, and I am really glad that they actually decided to 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 do this. Now they're building it um, themselves, so this is an in-house product, which is which is pretty cool um, because I know that um, a lot of people tend to recommend now uh, writing your ISOs to USB using um, a command called DD, which is a command line. Um, uh, application. Uh, it's very easy to use, but people still are intimidated by the command line. And a program like DD, which requires um, pseudo permissions and can go quite horribly wrong if you select the wrong partition or the wrong uh, or the wrong device or whatever. So, so it is definitely good that they're actually including this. I think USB um, startup. There is a deficiency in the market because there used to be quite a lot of them, but uh, programs that like UNet boot in and the one that uh, that comes standard currently with uh, with Ubuntu, they're not that great for writing other distributions that aren't Ubuntu. Ubuntu works with those kind of um, USB startup writers, but the trouble with them is that they don't do the device partitioning um, properly. So that a lot of distributions I know that um, Antergos and Manjaro I think are affected by these, as well as um, OpenSUSE. And I found that out when I was, uh, you know, when I was testing out all the uh, all the distributions that uh, it was a problem that I came up against. And it's well, I found it to be a reasonably new problem, um, but I don't know if that's as part reason, you know, if if that's workflow or if that's uh, just how the uh, how the game has changed. They're bringing in support for ZFS file system, but it seems like they're not going to be um, setting it as the default file system. As an end user and someone who has kind of only been following the fringes of the, uh, uh, you know, of this of the uh, of the news surrounding all the different file systems, uh, I got to say this is this is for me um, not an issue that I, I, I that, you know, it's not a make or break issue for me personally. But I understand that it's a lot of problem uh, that it's certainly problematic that ZFS. Uh, is is not particularly well supported on Linux when it is on other operating systems, but it's looking like um, uh, Ubuntu are just going to run out in front and, and they're going to support it the best they can, but they're not going to be making it default. That seems to be uh, a pretty brave move, but a sensible one at the same time. It's certainly not the most outlandish thing they can do to try and sort of push forward the Linux is relevant agenda in the file system kind of way, but... Um, but Ubuntu definitely want to take a lead with it, um, and they really need to get it right because if um, if ZFS is pushed too early, it is going to really, really, really get some bad press. Um, I feel so. So let's hope Canonical and Ubuntu know what they're doing. But I suspect they're putting more than a few pounds into it. So the last one I've got down here on my notes is the uh, they are getting rid of the Ubuntu Software Center for the GNOME Software Center. That is a very, very interesting choice, especially considering that it seems like they're going to be continuing to maintain the Ubuntu Software Center, but not including it in the main distribution. Um, that's very, very interesting. Um, i got to admit, it is a choice that I would have made. The, the GNOME Software Center is actually really quite good. Um, so I don't see why you wouldn't use it. You might as well use it, you know. There's no point in spending time developing your in-house solution if it's just as easy to bring in someone else's pre-made solution and does the job even better. So there are plenty, plenty more um, changes that uh, are going to come with Ubuntu 16.04. Uh, they haven't all been um, released yet. Uh, and, or announced yet, and that's down to the fact that the f uh, feature freeze is about a month away now. Uh, that's when they stop active development and building new things, and that's when they start testing and shoring up and fixing up all the holes and everything. So there is, uh, this is not going to be a complete list, um, but it certainly looks like this is going to be a good distribution, and it certainly looks like it's a return to form for the Ubuntu desktop, and that's what I like to see, because the more momentum there is with the Ubuntu desktop, it brings momentum with it, and it's generally what's good for any desktop Linux distribution is generally better for, for everyone. That's sort of the nature of how open source works. So even if you are not an Ubuntu user, and at the current point of recording this, I am not an Ubuntu user. I'm actually currently uh, on the Manjaro KDE um, distribution. And i got to say, actually, when it comes to Manjaro, I'm not going to sort of tangent too much on it, but it's uh, it's become my main driver because I've really come, become addicted to the latest uh, software that you can get in the repositories there. But also... Um, as far as I'm concerned, the KDE version of Manjaro is the definitive version. It's um, the 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 sort of the cohesion and the 
uh, the 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 nature of the KDE desktop, which works with all its parts, uh, you know, sort of working together in synchronicity, you know, that works really really well on top of um, a pretty dynamic operating system. Uh, so it, uh, it 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 just keeps its ecosystems well maintained. I guess is uh, is my way of putting it. It sort of results in a little bit more or significantly more stability and a lot more polish than perhaps the other GTK based desktop environments. But I, I don't want to open that kind of worms up right now. Uh, apologies for the rambling, but you know what I'm like on this channel. Um, and apologies for not being able to have the camera up, but uh, it's actually currently recording something else, which you'll no doubtly see in the future. So thank you very much for uh, listening to me today. Please leave your comments down in the comment section below. I'm getting quite a lot of comments these days, uh, but they've always uh, been incredibly insightful and, and thoughtful. So um, I apologize if I can't uh, reply to every single one of them, but I can assure you that for the next couple of days after releasing a video, I do make sure that I read every comment that, that goes up on the uh, on the comment section, just so you know where I'm at with that. So thank you very much for listening, guys. Um, let me know what you think. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.